Hey, what's going on guys? It's Shard of the Dead. Um, I was going to make a quick little video if I could today, and I was going to talk to you about something um, in the zombie survival brain, um, of course. Um, I want to go over you what the blender is, um, and the theory of bugging in versus bugging out, and where you stand. Um, First off, the blender is when um, the infection of the zombies is spreading exponentially and zombies are just exploding throughout the streets and people are in a panic and they're out trying to flee from their homes to get out of town. They're out there trying to do all this stuff and um, people are shooting each other, they're shooting zombies, zombies are attacking people and it's just pandemonium and chaos. Um, that's the blender. So if you're in the height of the blender, that is like the worst possible scenario. So if you can bug out before the blender happens and ride the wave out, then that's a preferable um, scenario if you can get out of dodge first. If not, that means you're going to have to bug in or try to fight in complete nuttiness. Well, I'm not going to fight nuttiness. I mean, it just it's your, your chances of survival are so low. Um, I mean, you just drop exponentially, you know. So, for me, if I can't jump out, uh, out, of, the, out of the city, if I can't bug out pre-blender and ride the wave out, then that means I'm going to have to bug in until the blender completes, and then I have a couple of options because there's going to be a length of time and you're going to see some little micro surges little, little, little puffs here and there throughout several days anywhere between three to ten days you're going to see little micro surges and then you're going to see another mini blender around that seven to ten day mark and then you're going to see some more micro surges and then about fourteen days you'll see another mini blender which is a little smaller than the last one and that should be your final real blender. After that, you'll see little surges here and there of just little pockets of people. And you're going to see the ranks of zombies swell through this time also. Um, because people are running out of supplies, so they're starting to leave their homes to go out. So you're going to see surges here and there. But, you know, you're going to see people, because most people have about a week's worth of food and water in their house. Uh, if a person happened to catch wind of what's going on, and they fill up their bathtub full of water, and or they already have some preps or whatever. If you happen to have a week, just got your week's worth of groceries, it might last you 10 or 12 days, depending on how much you can ration it. If you had any other food already in the house, uh, depending on what you, what, are, what you have at your disposal. So depending on what, what you have, food and water, um, and with whatever you might have been able to uh, fill up as far as water containers and whatnot, um, in the, main, in the meanwhile, you, you might have one week, maybe, to, if you, if you ration it out and you just went to the grocery store and you didn't run yourself completely bone dry of food, you might could stretch it to maybe 14 days. Maybe. And, that, and, that's, and that's where most people are going to be, is looking at stretching their food to two weeks. Uh, and then people are going to start going, hey, you know, it's time for me to get out here and try to get some food. Um, uh, water, people should have plenty of water if, you know, you drink out of the back of your toilet tank. You, you know, that's, you know, a couple, three gallons of water, um, depending upon your tank. Uh, if, you're really, if you're really getting out of the wire, you can pull the water in your toilet bowl, I suppose. Uh, it depends on how many bathrooms you have. At least you have several toilet tanks. Uh, to choose from if you have a hot water heater in your home, you can tap the hot water heater and you can use the water that's in that. So that's several gallons of water there. So there's some hints for you for uh, water inside your home. Now, uh, if you're like myself and you live in an apartment, um, I've got good and bad here. I'm on the second floor, which is bad if I want to run fast and get out of here quickly. I gotta go downstairs, or I have to dangle drop off my balcony, or I have to, you know, slide down a rope or a pole, or or do something to get myself down to the second from the second to the first floor. The benefit is, is I have one door I have to barricade. All my windows, I don't have to care about. 
Uh, I just have one point of entry right there. That's it. Once I stick crap in front of that, I don't have to worry about anything coming through that freaking door. I can put enough crap in front of that door that there's nothing coming in. It's going to be just as strong as the wall. Um, so I don't have to really care about um, all these extra windows. These are now lookout points. I can use those for visualization. I can let light in, natural light. Because um, theoretically, um, uh, I'm probably only going to have 24 hours worth of electricity. Um, if, if everything stays running properly, unmanned, uh, the, the, I've actually looked it up, the unmanned power source, the, best, the, the, the longest running power source unmanned is three days before it shuts itself down. Um, after that, you know, it's just no power. Well, theoretically, if people are going to be smashing into uh, to, uh, different you know, electric lines, transformers are going to be knocked out, there's going to be no repair crews to fix it, so you're not going to have any power. You know, unless you have a generator in your home, forget it. Unless you have solar power, no dice. You're, you're done. You're, you're no good. You have no power. Uh, so you want to eat your perishables. If you have ice cream, you know, uh, raw meats, things like that, cook those up as quickly as you can. Um, while you have power, if you can, uh, cook that crap up fast. Eat that crap up fast. Go ahead and go ahead and poke those calories in, um, because at least cooked meat lasts longer than raw meat. Um, so at least you can utilize that. Put it in Ziploc bags. Stick it back in your freezer, and it'll you know hopefully freeze. And by the time it freezes to thaws to where it's just cool, then at least you have you know as much time possible to keep your to keep your you know your food that's the that's perishable you know viable longer. Uh, outside of that, I mean, you got canned goods, you've got noodles, whatever. You soak those in water. Even if you can't cook them, you can soak them. You know. Um, you can set your water pot in the sun to make it warm, so you have warm water versus you know cool water, uh, so it's at least warm. Uh, if you have uh, you know magnifying glass, you can try to heat up the water with magnifying glasses, things like that. Um, now keep in mind that you know it's gonna be quiet. There's gonna be no white noise, no air conditioner, no TV, no cars, you know, no no electric lights outside, nothing. It's dead silent. Except for whatever pandemonium is going on outside, uh, it's going to be dead, dead, fracking quiet. It's going to be just silent. And so every piece of noise you make is going to sound like thunder. So, and, and if you're, and, you know, people are always saying, oh, you know, you don't want to use guns. Why not? My footsteps are going to sound like a thunderstorm because there's no sound. So anything you, you do, anything within that sound range is going to hear you anyway. No matter how quiet you're being, you're not a stealth ninja over here, you know, every second of the day. If you snore when you sleep, you know, that's going to draw them to your door. I mean, you know, is your B.O. going to draw them to your door if because you're not showering for days? You know, is, is that going to bring them? Um, you got to have a place to have your human waste to go. And if you're pitching that out the back of are is that going to draw them? Who knows? I mean, who knows what's going to draw them? Are they going to smell you? Are they going to see you? Are they going to hear you? You know, I mean, what what is it they're going to they're going to do? Is what's going to draw them to your door? Uh, and the thing is, is you're not sure. You know, um, I mean, we think sound, we think sight, we think maybe smell. Um, you know, hearing, yeah, we're pretty sure on that one. That that one sounds all right. And sight sounds pretty right. Um, smell, maybe. You know, we hope not. Does that that gives them you know a little bit of more of an element of danger? Because now you can't even just like hide quietly in a, a nice little area and be like, hey, I'm safe. You know, they, they fracking can't see me. Well, that's not necessarily going to be the case. I mean, if they can't see you, then <laughs> that's, that's fine and dandy. It's great. But if they can smell you, now that makes it a little bit rougher. I mean, you can't just hide behind a door and just hope they pass on by. Like the Walking Dead, whenever they're hiding under cars and they're just, you know, scurrying on by, not a problem. You know, that's all fine and dandy if they can't smell you. Uh, and, but they also made a point where they put the, the carcasses on them in the very first episode where smell obviously made a difference. They walk right past them and they're like, oh, that's another dead thing. Hmm. So, you know, I mean, obviously the inconsistency is the show, but, I mean, it just makes you think, what, what point 
are they really going to be able to notice you? Uh, is it going to be from sight, smell, sound? What what are they going to be using to, to track you? Um, so it's going to be the meat and the potatoes of that. So you have your little mini surges, you have your next little blender or whatever. Uh, so you're running out of food around the seven ten day mark. Crap! You're going to have to start poking your head out of your little you know your little cave too because well now you're you're running out. You're running out of uh, you're running out of supplies. You know you might have you know, stuff, but, you know, you might not have enough food and water. You might have water, but you might not have no food. You know, so you can last several days with no food. Excuse me. Um, but you don't have, but, you know, you're going to need need the nourishment at some point. Um, you know, if you have multivitamins in the house, at least that's going to help keep you, you know, uh, help supplement your, your, your um, caloric intake if you're just like, you know, Drinking down log cabin and eating spoonfuls fulls of lard for for calories, and you take some multivitamins to get the supplements you need for your body that can at least kind of keep you going. If you're just eating junk, uh, just to just to do that, um, you know, you know, if you have powdered milk in the house, you're just pounding down some milk just to just to get that calorie in there. Um, so I mean, you, know, you do have some options as far as that's concerned, but the main thing is is you know. You know what, what situation are you going to be coming from this from? So now, say that you have plenty of food. Say you have a month's worth of preps for you and your family. Okay, so that that gives you one full month. You know, so you have say we'll call it thirty days. You have thirty days food, thirty days water for you and everyone in your homestead. Okay, so um, around that fourteen day mark, you know, you can start to make you can start to make choices. When do you want to go out? Well, that 14-day mark is when the final blender should happen. Um, and hopefully, somewhere between 14 to 21 days, that next 7-day window, if they can't find more food and the people that are prepped can stay quiet and stay hid, hopefully the hordes will rove someplace else in search of sustenance elsewhere. Uh, so that way you're not, you know, attracting more. So that gives you... Another seven days worth of food, well, nine days worth of food, that you're like, okay, let's give it a couple more days. Give it, you give yourself seven days worth of food and water. Grab your preps. Get to your vehicle. Hopefully it's still running because it's been sitting for three weeks. So cars that sit for three weeks, batteries sometimes go bad. So sometimes they just don't, well, they don't want to turn over. So you might have, have some issues with batteries. Your car might not start. If you're lucky and you have a stick shift and you can push it, pop the clutch, get it started, you know, then that might work out for you. You might be able to get it started and get that and get that engine moving, get the alternator cranking and get that battery charged. You know, that might be a possibility, maybe, uh, if you're lucky. Um, so, I mean, you know, you're, you're looking at different aspects there. Say that you're lucky and you have a good brand new battery and it's nice and strong and you just, your car cranks over, starts up, you're good. Uh, gas is obviously going to be viable. Uh, regular gas is viable for three years. Diesel is viable for five years without any kind of stabilization treatment. So your, your gas will be fine. Uh, so you get in there, you pack up your vehicle, pack up your gear with your food, water, preps, um, you know, you know your, your, your firearms if you have any, or whatever you have for defense and, and offense, and you, you take off. Well, now, now where are you going to go? Where, where is your bug out location? So, you know, how far is your bug out location from your current location? You know, what do you have set up there waiting for you that makes that better than where you're at now? Because you only have a week's worth of food and water. So if it takes you a day to get there, well, you still have only a few days worth of food and water. Now, if you have another month's worth of food and water at your bug out location, then great. Then that gives you another month. What are you going to do after that? Are you going to scavenge? Are you going to go out and try to, you know, do acquisition runs and try to, you know, accumulate goods and stuff? Well, now, not only do you have, you know, you know herds of zombies that are, are moping around looking for food, you're also going to have bands of marauders. Now, here's an interesting question for you. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to go over this with you. And it's a matter of perspective and from each person's point of view. Here's the thing. There's going to be gangs out there. You know, we call them marauder bands, okay? Um, street gangs, cops, military, 
Um, <clears throat> um, I had another one on top of my head, but it just went blank for some strange reason. Uh, police, military, gangs, organized crime, that's what it was. And well, unthought of one, which I was waiting for last to say on purpose, is sports teams. Um, you know, lacrosse, baseball, football, all these guys. I mean, these are at young athletes, high school up. Um, some high school players, I mean, they can throw, you know, 90 some mile, mile an hour fastballs or better, you know. Uh, so if you got sports teams, they already have a team captain. They have their alpha male. They have the, this hierarchy. So they're used to their pecking order. So when things go down, they're going to go out there in their pecking order and they're going to start doing their thing. Now, there's three kinds of people in this world. And, and I'm sure you've heard this statement before. There's uh, wolves, dogs, and sheep. Okay? So here's the point. is Most people are sheep. So everyone's sheeple, right? Except for a small percentage. Well, out of this small percentage, you have wolves. Wolves, sometimes they're lone wolves, but most of the time wolves runs in packs. And that's where you're going to get your organized crime and gang members and police officers and all them. People that are already gang, bang, yeah, blah, already banded together in their little social groups or in their, in their jobs or in their social life or whatever. These social groups, these cliques uh, that are not like white collar folks that just kind of hang out and like have dinner parties. Those are sheep. Okay. But I'm talking like cops that go to the range together. You know, we're talking about guys that do, you know, athletes that go out and do stuff. They play sports together, doing physical exercise. They're used to swinging bats. They're used to throwing balls. They're used to doing stuff physical. It's not a problem for them. You know, um, you know those those kind of things. You have gangbangers. They have access to firearms. They have they have some pretty good stuff. You know, those are going to be some dangerous motherfuckers out there. You know, they want to take your stuff, they're probably going to take it. And they're probably going to take your life to boot. So, um, now you have to worry about multiple aspects of, of of this whole issue of being attacked by zombies. So, here's, here's how it works. Okay. You have all these marauder groups out there, and you're trying to acquisition food. Unless you have a set up fortified bug out location and you can get from point A to point B without any incident with the preps that you have and you're able to sustain yourself as long as necessary to get you there and to get you to there and you get there and you're unharassed and you're able to get there without anyone following you there and you haven't drawn any attention and you're able to st stick it out there, then great. I hope you can grow food. I hope you have livestock. Uh, I hope you're set. Because if you don't have all these things, the only thing you're doing is you're relying on this year's worth of like freeze-dried food that you've got out there for your family and water. Uh, I'm sorry. You're, you're going to be in some pretty bad times because what are you going to do after that year? You know, you're going to feel pretty safe for a while. It's not going to be a forever thing. It's going to be a right here, right now thing. <coughs> so, um, thing is, is you got to do something. You know, so what are you going to do? What, what is your preps? And this is, this is my question to you. What is your preps? You know, what, what is going to get you from point A to point B? Are you going to bug in? Are you going to try to bug out immediately? What, what stage of the blender cycle are you going to go? You know, pre-blender, if you can, obviously, you know, it would be the best. Um, Post initial blender, you know, and the you know, secondary blender, you know, the middle blender, or the fi the final blender, which is the smaller blender, you know, or post all three blenders, and just go out there whenever things is kind of, you know, kind of settled. You know, you whenever things are kind of as they are. You know, what stage are you going to leave your your little house? You know, when are you going to when are you going to crawl out and go? And you run, up, run off and try to go away. You know, when, when, when are you going to go? Um, you know, to me, I'm going to be checking the water every day. And I have enough preps and stuff. I mean, I'm okay for a month, but it's, I don't want to be here for a month. Um, what, if, what if as I'm on my way to my bug out location, 
you know, what would normally take me a few hours drive to get there, it's triple that, quadruple that, maybe, maybe, maybe more. You know, it might take me ten times longer to get there. It might take me, you know, ten days to get there instead of a few hours. So say it takes me ten days. Well, that means I'm going to have to have ten days worth of food and water to get me there. That means I have to carry ten days worth of food and water. Well, what if I can't find fuel between here and there? My fuel is only going to get me about halfway there. I can get about halfway there on a tank of gas. Well, now what am I going to do if I can't fill back up and get there? That's going to suck. That's going to put me in a pretty bad position where I, I can't really do what I want to do. Well, I might use up, I might even get halfway there because I'm having to, you know, take my Jeep and pull crap out of the way, push crap out of the way take detours, going off-road, going around and looping around stuff, and wasting time and energy and precious gas, you know, what's, what's the situation look like? Do you have extra gas racks that you have on the roof of your vehicle that you can hold extra fuel so you can continue to fuel your vehicle, you know? I mean, what, what do you have at your disposal? What is going to get you by? And, and these are all important questions and all important things to think about when it comes to actual prepping and the blender in the stages of bugging out and bugging in. So here's the main thing is what stage are you going to leave? And this is my question to you. When are you going to leave? Are you going to leave immediately? Are you going to stay? Uh, are you plan on just bugging in indefinitely? Or at least for an extended period of time as in you know months to a year because you have that kind of preps? Uh, what kind of bug out vehicle do you have? What kind of bug out location do you have? And what do you have to defend your current position from not only zombies but marauders that may find you in the man in the intro. So it's so a shot of the dead. Um, you know, as always, um, comment. Uh, I'd like to hear what you got going on. And as always, subscribe and uh, you know, thumbs up if you like what's going on. Um, and as always, you know, keep on topic and, and stay polite.